Well, good evening, everybody. Well, welcome to this evening uh, to another edition of Smart in the Round. Smart is actually the short form of street in the art of theater, uh, which is a program that we launched in 2015 to build creative approaches to management for theater groups across India. And we've been doing a lots of workshops with groups from across the country uh, on this very same thing. Uh, last year during the pandemic, you know, when the pandemic is on, of course, but when it all was you know, online and lockdowns, uh, we actually introduced this program, Smart in the Round, which are essentially conversations on culture, creativity, and context. Uh, the first conversation this year was on community, uh, essentially how theater people across the country have stepped out and helped communities around them, either the theater community or broader communities. And uh, the next uh, session will be on the kind of experiments that theater people have done during the pandemic online and otherwise. Uh, so before I invite the panelists, a few things that we just need to remember. Of course, we'd like you to engage uh, with this session through comments in the chat box and uh, questions for the panelists in the Q&A box. Both of these can be accessed at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please state if your question is for a particular panelist. Those of you who are on Facebook, uh, you can type your questions in the comment and the comment box and the smart team will pass them on to us. Also, everybody on the webinar, keep your eye on the chat box where from time to time we will share documents containing very interesting information and links uh, to each of these spaces that we're going to be talking, you know, representing this evening. Uh, you can download them and then look at them at leisure later on and check out these spaces in more detail. All right, so on to the session. Uh, over the last five years, there has been a perceptible shift in, urban, in the urban theater landscape in India, um, right across the country in different cities, large and small, <clears throat> small independent alternative performance spaces have been mushrooming, prolific absolutely, and profoundly changing the way theater is created, curated, and even received in these places. But of course the pandemic has dealt a heavy blow to theater and live performances. And, in the process also severely impacted these small spaces. You know, their financial models, even in the best of times, have been very, very edgy, very, very kind of precarious. Uh, but with the pandemic and with the lockdown, they have had to shut down. And many of them, I, I don't think, will even open, reopen after this. But some have managed to survive by using different strategies, uh, sometimes reinventing themselves, sometimes going into hibernation. Now, was there a price to pay? What were these strategies? How did they develop them? How is it? impacted their work, what does the future hold? These are some of the things that we're going to be talking this uh, evening about. And uh, our panelists, our four panelists, represent four such amazing spaces from different parts of the country. Uh, but before I introduce them to you and invite them on the show, let's watch a short video that tells you, gives you a glimpse of these beautiful spaces. Darshana, can we run the video, please? Well, aren't they beautiful spaces? So let me first uh, introduce the first panelist. Uh, it's Kalol Bhattacharya. He's a playwright, director, and actor from West Bengal. Welcome, Kalol. When Kalol was younger, he was very inspired by Prabhir Guha's views on alternative theater. Uh, and he went on to work with the legendary Badal Sarka. So all this kind of molded his thinking about theater. And he established his own group, Ibong Amra, in 1994. Now, he did something very interesting. He looked for his actor performers 
in the tribal settlements and among the underprivileged peasants and bricklayers from neighboring villages. That's how they started working. But he soon realized that you know, all of them depended on daily wage labor and they couldn't really manage to make enough time to do theater. So what they all did was they got a bit of land and they all moved there and then they started farming. They had poultry, a small fishing pond and the income from that allowed them to continue their theater practice. They're able to do theater amazingly. Now, Tepantar, of course, is an extremely well-known space. And um, more recently, their work has also started being seen in major Indian theater festivals all across the country. And of course, they have a very large home audience too. Our second panelist is Michaela Talwar, a trained journalist and a self-made artist. She is the co-founder with uh, Karan Talwar and the creative director at Harkat Studios in Mumbai, which is actually one of Mumbai's pioneering alternative performance spaces. Uh, Harkat has an interesting background. It started essentially as a loose collective of uh, uh, graphic designers, artists, and film people. And over time, they also began to run as a co-working space. Uh, and you know, over weekends, they found several young performers saying that, listen, if the space is not being used on the weekend, can we do a small performance? And of course, you know, they've been extremely welcoming. And uh, over time, they realized that there's an amazing audience that wants to watch this. And so organically over time, Harkat grew into a very, very interesting hub. Uh, just to give you an example, I mean, as part of her work at Harkat, uh, uh, Michaela is an arts enabler and has produced and curated all, well, more than 400 theater shows and exhibitions in various forms over the last six years. Uh, Michaela originally hails from Germany and has lived in many cities, but she says that no other city has quite formed her the way Mumbai has. <laughs> um, we were actually, you know, neighbors with uh, st at Studio Tamasha. We were neighbors with uh, Harkat Studios for two years, and it was wonderful to see how dynamic and vibrant that space was. Our third uh, panelist is Manu Jose, who runs the beautiful place Ala Center for Culture and Alternative Education in Mulang Turuti, in which is a small suburb uh, of Cochin in Kerala. Manu is a trained actor. And uh, he has worked with eminent directors in Kerala, but really he found his passion as a storyteller and as a trainer. Uh, he's the creative director of ALA and his dream was to create the best design alternative performance space in Kerala, a theater space that would engage with local communities, especially with children, with different activities like theater and music, and also, also work as an effective training space for adults. Welcome, uh, Manu, to the show. And our fourth panelist for the evening is Rupali Bhave, who is the co-creator with Pradeep Vaidya of The Box, which is Pune's first black box theater. Uh, Rupali is also the founder of Jacaranda, an organization that brings theater to children. She's an actor, a translator, an author, and also a dear colleague at SMART. So Rupali and Pradeep ran, already ran a space in Pune called Expression Lab, where they did their own work and hosted other shows. But they believed that Pune needed a well-equipped black box theater. And so they began retrofitting an old industrial shed when the first lockdown hit and they had to stop work. But they doggedly continued the work when the lockdown eased a little bit. And interestingly, Rupali, interestingly, their first shows that they did at the theater were not live shows, they were online shows. So, you know, it's, it's quite an interest, it's quite ironic uh, that the way it happened. So, well, you know, the pandemic and the lockdown, we were running, you know, Studio Tamasha, as I said, in our Ar Aramnagar location next to Harkat Studios for two years. And then we had to shut down because, you know, we ran out of money and we moved to another space in Lokandwala, also in Andheri. And things were going well. And suddenly out of the blue, you know, there was this announcement that we were going to be locked down and that seemed to suddenly extend. And we just, we were just, you know, completely bewildered. We were in a daze. We just had no clue uh, how to respond to this. Uh, so I just like to start, Kalol, how was it for you? Uh, what were the first thoughts about your space, about your work when, when the lockdown was announced for you? In 2020, uh, in March, uh, when lockdown first came in front of us, uh, all kind of activities, uh, all kind of uh, our programs, planned programs, uh, and all bookings, everything, everything was cancelled, everything was postponed, and 
uh, everything, all kind of activities uh, was stopped. And from March to October, this seven months, uh, we had no activities, no one. Yeah. Sure. Uh, totally, uh, Tepantar Theatre Village was totally closed. And, did you, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Kalol, but did uh, you imagine that you would be shut down for so long? Did you have any clue about that? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, at that time, we had no idea about it. Uh, yeah. And we, we don't know uh, what is going on. And sure, sure. Uh, in that time, we were in a panic, in a fear. Yeah. And we were very much depressed. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, and suddenly, suddenly we found that uh, we have nothing to do. Correct, correct. Mika, what was your first reaction when this happened? Do you remember your first thoughts? What was it? Was it panic? It was what? Um, our first reaction was definitely that um, we would, I mean, we were all shocked, but then we had this violent reaction towards it, I would say almost violent, where we were like, okay, no, um, we are a physical theater space, we believe in physical theater, because there were a lot of um, actors who decided almost immediately that, okay, all right, we'll do something online, I'll just do something on my Instagram channel or on Facebook, and um, we discussed this within the team, whether we should do that, because we do have an Instagram channel, who's, which is quite popular, but um, we were quite... Actually, the entire team was on the same page that we said we're a physical theater. We really believe in the physicalness of the theater. And especially because Harcourt Studios, like you mentioned earlier, is kind of a living room space, a very lived in space. Um, so we there was no way we would do anything online. So we were completely against it. Of course, over time, um, we have adjusted and we had different... Um, we decided to go digital in our very own way, but way, way, way into the lockdown. We'll like talk many about that, into... Nika. We'll talk about that. Let me just, yeah. just get, get a... Manu, how did you guys react? What was the scene for you guys? Um, it, it, it's the same as everyone said, you know, because Arad started in 2018, December, and it was only a one and a half year old when this all this thing happened. So um, we are actually, you know, started having uh, building a, an audience. You know? Slowly, people started knowing about Tala, and uh, slowly people started coming for programs. And locally, you know, uh, especially maybe because of Facebook and all that, people outside uh, my town kind of know about Tala. But then people in Mulanduruti, the local town, only started knowing about Tala that time. But then that was a blow, you know, when when the whole thing stuck. And uh, that was in March and April. We were planning heavy workshops, you know, children's theatre workshop, yeah. Adrubas, puppetry, blah, blah, and all that. But then yeah. it all got stopped. Sure, sure. And uh, it was a shock initially, but then slowly, you know, we got adjusted to it, started doing many things. We'll yeah. come to that. Yeah, we'll come to that. Rupali, you guys were actually uh, putting your black box together when this happened, right? Yes, yes. So what did you think? <laughs> Uh, we were shell shocked and terribly worried because we were in the middle of putting the space together. Uh, it was an industrial shed lying unused for about uh, 10 odd years and the heavy machinery was lying there and all sorts of things. And we had just cleared it out and now we were shaping it into what we wanted it to be when the first lockdown hit. And for a brief while, we did wonder whether we uh, had would have to abandon plans whether we wanted to abandon plans and uh, we spent a couple of days uh, thinking about it and then we said no we have to forge ahead there's no other, I mean we've started out on this path we cannot drop it like this it was tough but we carried on Wonderful, wonderful. So, Kalo, coming back to you right so hmm. you know you were saying that you were all taken aback everything was shut down what did you what what strategy did you think that you could sort of employ to keep yourself afloat what were the main concerns that you guys had was it the work was it the uh, was it the uh, well being of your company uh, what were the concerns that you guys had uh, uh, in, in in that time uh, our performance and our all kind of activities uh, was stopped and um, uh, we faced difficulties to run our repertory you know we have many sources of income from our Tepanto Theatre Village, like our poultry, fishery, to organizing training, workshop, tourism also. And everything was stopped. And in that time, 
uh, we had no earning it is uh, it is the, our uh, main main problem was in that time the how we can run our repertory how how our 20 artists they are full time theater worker and they are totally involved with our theatrical activities activities of tepantor they had they have no other uh, profession they have no other jobs they are totally involved in theater so how they can survive uh, uh, and still now uh, we are facing this problem how to run our repertory and of course uh, we had no work no performance uh, no call shows no activities um, uh, we were totally depressed and in that time uh, we had no clear idea uh, wha oh, what we can do eh? uh, what is oh, what is going on eh? um, we had no idea and um, uh, mainly we are working in a rural area and our uh, connections with the outside people was totally stopped eh? like a like a prisoner <laughs> we spent that time that seven months so did you all did you all stay in the village together or did everybody go back to their own villages no 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 um, um our five uh, two six members uh, they are living with their family in our tepantor theater village and others members they are comes um, uh, around the tepantor um, um, uh, not very long eh? uh, nearby yeah. villages they are come yeah. from nearby villages did you kalol did you at any time play with the idea of just saying this is impossible we just have to shut this place down eh? did you ever feel that this is eh? getting, the situation is getting very difficult and eh? we just will have to be forced to shut the place down did that ever thought mm. cross your mind no 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 <laughs> eh? Uh, this, this kind of idea huh, uh, never come in our mind. Huh? That's interesting. <laughs> okay, all right, Michaela, uh, you were saying that late. You you were very very against the whole idea of doing anything online because essentially, you, and yes, I remember there was a huge debate at that time about you know theater being essentially a live art and the whole question of you know the whole debate on liveness and what what is the meaning of liveness etc. Uh, huge debates all over the world and you know in India as well. Uh, so what, what, what actually happened? What was the strategy you kind of figured out eventually? Um, eventually we, so in the beginning, we thought this is only going to uh, last a couple of weeks, but then of course we all realized these, and we enjoyed the first couple of weeks. I have to say the first two weeks, we were like, great, finally we get a holiday. Um, of course, apart from the scare of the pandemic, but personally we were like, great. But then after two weeks, of course, we got slightly panicky. Um, and we thought about what we can do. And then I think two months into the lockdown, um, there was uh, two months into the lockdown, there was an opportunity for us to apply for funding to um, come up with an alternative theater um, way of presenting our theater. And there had been this idea within Harkat since a long time that we wanted to do something which can also be on, that was way before the pandemic. We thought we should do something which can also be online so that people who are um, suffering from disabilities or who are not living in Bombay or even people from around the world who've moved away but want to follow us um, or have come and visited us and wanted to keep on following us, that we could do something which is online. Um, and then we, thought about how can we make it look really like theater and not just being on Zoom and having four different screens or eight different screens. And eventually we came up with what we call the virtual interactive stage. So um, it's in our black box. We have a black box um, theater now, or sort of a black box. Um, and we use, because we're actually also filmmakers, so we use um, high-end cinema cameras and we set them up in the space as per the artists and we stream from those cameras uh, online. And additionally, so apart from having different viewpoints that the audience can choose, the audience can also interact with the um, theater maker. So it's all very elaborate, but basically <laughs> to put it a uh, long story short, if you watch a play on the Wii stage, you can interact with the audience by uh, with, with the performers by, for example, having a clap button. So the performer actually hears clapping in the space. Oh. So for them, it's also as if it's 
they don't see the audience, but they can hear the audience, they can feel the audience. And there we are displaying with a beamer um, on the wall comments that people are writing. You can vote, you can, we had one play where you had to decide which prisoner is getting in prison, who's gonna get freed and they can decide which one. So um, there's a lot of interactivity and the quality of watching it is much, much higher than on Zoom because you get uh, cinema quality. But it still has that feeling of a play. It's still, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's still in our theater space. So it did mean that you know the the, the theater makers had to kind of rework their form yeah. a little bit to incorporate these things. Were theater people open to these ideas, to these suggestions, to these challenges? Um, there were a lot of them found it very abstract. I hope you don't find it abstract when I'm describing it right now. Um, they found it very abstract, but then I came and visited it, and I think you also saw it, and um, then they understood more the possibilities of it. But I have to admit, and it's a learning for us because nobody has done this in this way. Um, it requires immense amount of training because even the person who sits at the console who does the audience interaction needs to be cued immediately. They need to know, all right, there's always a three second lag because of us, of transmission. So this three second lag where the actors already done, but then it reaches the audience, then they give their feedback. So all of that needs to be extremely fine tuned. Then theater actors are not necessarily used to working with cameras and also our directors. So they the possibilities of a camera that you can go extremely close, yeah. for example, which you can't do in theater, um, all these things to play around with, it takes training. But um, yeah, it's a learning process for everyone, Wonderful. but it's highly exciting. Terrific. Uh uh, Rupali, tell us about your lockdown. You, you know, you started saying that you know you uh, you decided to carry on, uh, you know, creating retrofitting the space. Yeah. Uh, how long did that go on? And then when that was done, you had a space that was ready and no live performances allowed. So what did you guys oh. do? So uh, first of all, to create the space, what happened was we were uh, getting it prepped, and we because of the lockdown, work had to be halted and uh, finances were beginning to run low. So we had to reprioritize what we could do with the space. So uh, the first thing that we decided was there were some plans that would need to go on hold till such a time that, uh, so we had uh, an idea of an open air art gallery, a uh, uh, temporary museum that would keep changing, temporary museum of theater objects, a right. second as nine, so on and so forth. So we had to uh, redesign the space, so to speak, to make it uh, functional for theater performances primarily. And uh, we also had to look for uh, equally efficient, but uh, cheap uh, construction material and options. And uh, that somehow proved to be our advantage because we uh, found out something very interesting in terms of the wall that we had to uh, build. And it was cheaper, faster, uh, and uh, works just as well as your concrete wall. It's made from interlocking blocks of ply ash, and I'll spare you the technical right, details. Right, of course, no, no, but, yes, yes, absolutely, yeah. yeah so yeah. Um, then the space was ready. This was August. So from June to August, we got permission to just get construction work done. Still, live performances weren't allowed, so we couldn't even launch the space. We did a soft online launch, and then we had to resort to allowing shootings uh, because uh, the space was ready and live performances weren't allowed. And what we discovered, it wasn't originally in our uh, primary business model, but uh, we discovered that the space has uh, become very versatile. It uh, lends itself beautifully to all sorts of performance formats and shootings as well. And we needed to get it going. And so we just started with shootings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I think I think when the when the government finally allowed, uh, you know, as usual, it was done overnight. Okay, now you guys can yeah. start. Yes. Uh, you guys actually did uh, hurriedly. You put together something which was live, right? What <laughs> yes, is that? yes, yes. So uh, on the fifth of November, twenty twenty, uh, we had planned for a shooting of a play reading, and uh, on the fourth November, uh, suddenly we received a directive from the government that from the fifth uh, you can have uh, live shows with 50% yeah. capacity and the whole list of uh, SOPs. And we said, well, we've got to jump on this opportunity. We've got to have a live show on the first day that live shows are allowed. We were very excited about it. And clearly there was no publicity, nothing uh, that was possible at that uh, nth moment. But uh, the team, the performing team and us at the box, 
we just hurriedly reached out to all our acquaintances and got together uh, a 50 percent audience to sure. come in sure and uh, we converted that play reading shooting into a play reading show yeah so uh, we were able to catch that first date and we were very happy about it. wonderful i think that must have been a very very powerful gesture you know to convert an online thing into a live thing just overnight Wonderful. Uh, Manu, I'll come to you. What was happening at ALA? Once you realized that this is going to be around, uh, how did you... Because if I, if I know, uh, if I remember correctly, that, that the space that you run, that beautiful space, was actually a workshop that your uncle used, a mechanical engineering workshop that your uncle used to run, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How did you manage to keep that going and afloat and everything? Um, uh, luckily for me, see, uh, when we started in 2018, December, so I had kept in mind that, you know, it's going to take at least three years for us to stand on, you know, to get a ground. So this happened in between. So, so not, uh, so, uh, so that way I was kind, kind of prepared that, you know, okay, even if uh, nothing happens, I'm going to hold on to that uh, stage, physically in the space. And second thing, when I was here listening to uh, Kalol, so I thought it's thankful that I don't have a big team, you know. <laughs> Till <laughs> Corona, I used to worry that, okay, my God, I don't have a team. And <laughs> after Corona, maybe I said, thank God, I don't have a team to hold on, you know. I only had uh, one or two people to support financially or something like that. That really helped. Uh, but then, uh, like, you know, uh, as um, uh, Michael said, I'm also an actor and I'm also very, you know, or, uh, not at all an online person, though I've worked many years, blah, blah. Uh, so, uh, um, then uh, we, there was in between, uh, all those times, you know, uh, all the period we, we've done online sessions, personal sessions, storytelling sessions or and all that. But then generally there was a hold. There generally was a hold. Because uh, we didn't have anything to offer. So far, whatever happened was workshops and, you know, uh, chess and cycling and all that all got to stop. So there was nothing happening. But then personally, uh, what affected me more than uh, this um, theater getting close, more than that, what affected me personally was, um, I, I'm sure it should be the same for almost everybody, 18 people, around 18 people whom we know from, you know, very close people to uh, not people, they've died, you know. That actually, you know, really uh, stuck, oh, many of us, you know, some of the very close friends, not all by Corona, you know, but there are many reasons. And that was actually a big thing. And I, what I noticed was uh, there was kind of a depression coming in. And even younger people, I'm 53, even younger people like 30, 35 started writing autobiography kind of notes, you know, uh, kind of, you know, they started coming to an end or something <laughs> like, okay, we don't have much to do kind of thing. So in on Facebook, a lot of people started writing our experience in theater kind of, you know, uh, but this one way it affected me, but luckily, this, as I told earlier, that you know, my uh, my partner is a doctor, and we have a clinic. And because of pandemic, though the clinic is in a small town, people started stopping going to big towns, and you know, we started actually getting more uh, patients coming to our clinic. And I took it as an opportunity to develop the clinic so that financial support will eventually support me to hold on to the uh, theater space. Uh, and that really worked. That literally worked. And that actually gave me a lot of confidence, a lot of, uh, what do you say, peace in me, for me, that, you know, I don't have to worry about uh, my, this theater space, because I know that I'll hold on to it, maybe, maybe for one or two more years. But yeah. also, meanwhile, there was a lot of discussion happened about doing programs for educational, because you know that in Kerala, education is a big thing. So there's a lot of discussion about making education online, and we had discussion with groups. Uh, nothing materialized in that manner, but then those discussions really helped me eventually to now for me to give it, uh, it gave me a lot of confidence that now I can plan um, uh, many programs online. Um, this yeah. is what generally happened. Yeah. No, that's very interesting, you know, because uh, Manu, you know that theater, theater practice in this country essentially depends on cross subsidy in a sense. Exactly, right? yeah. Either it's an individual cross subsidy, you know, that you actors will work in television or in cinema and that earning allows them to work in the theater. All of us do other stuff so that we can continue doing theater. And so you, that, that was the, that was the strategy that you decided on, which is that yeah. develop the, the, the clinic, your, your partner's clinic so that there is, it has a certain financial strength and that can support your work. I mean, that's a yeah. really interesting. Yeah. So, uh, you know, at, at, it's interesting what, what happened to us at Studio Tamasha. We, we went into a state of shock, of course, like everybody else. Uh, 
but we actually interestingly mikhail we decided to go online in a kind of a very very positive frame of mind okay um, we just felt that it because we ran a studio space in the real physical world we said can we take on the challenge and move it into virtual space okay and we did deal with this you know this ticketing platform insider uh insider.com uh, and uh, we said give us a virtual space on your platform which is essentially studio tamasha lives there and we would put up a whole lot of bunch of our regular programs that we did in the real space out there uh, it was very very exciting of course but extremely exhausting doing online work is twice as hard as doing work in the i mean it's just you know there's so many other aspects that come into play which all of you must have sort of you know gone through the filming of it the recording of it i mean it's a lot of work uh, and uh, though it was very exciting it all kind of you know left us a little more exhausted so i just want to know kalo let's go ahead uh, the second lockdown then happened right and we are hmm. still, in a sense just slowly easing out of it and the second mm. wave was really very very brutal i mean it knocks the pants out of everybody mm. it was horrible it was horrible i mean if manu you you know if i had 18 people passed away that you knew in the first uh, wave the second wave i mean the kind of images that we were seeing coming from across the country uh, it just was so disheartening at the end of the day people started questioning i mean should we even be thinking of our theater should we even be thinking of the arts when there is such incredible suffering happening around us and such cynical you know uh, responses from the state or the lack of response from the state so kalu what happened in the second because you are already suffering your member your, your the team is already suffering from the first lockdown you get a brief opening okay from hmm. november to march right you must have yes 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 so just yes. talk us through that what happened then uh, november to march uh, was good for us because uh, november to march uh, during this type we have performed ha uh, three theater festival was arranged in our campus and uh, december and january in in these two months ha uh, we get uh, so many bookings so many tourists visitors uh, came in our tepantor and we earned um, this four months but after march uh, in april uh, was the election month of west bengal you know uh, oh, yes, this year was the <laughs> election year of west bengal so april may june uh, same condition uh, but uh, this year uh, we are mentally prepared uh, we, we we have no panic no fear about corona about this pandemic situation uh, we have no fear no pan panic uh, and uh, depression uh, is uh, less um, <laughs> like a, a first lockdown uh first lockdown was more depressive but second lockdown is not uh, that but uh, uh, from uh, from july august and now in september this three month we are working we are working to develop our new production oh, uh, okay. in uh, uh, july 3 july to 12 july we arranged a production oriented workshop for our own group members only for our own group members only uh, 3rd to uh, 12th july and in august we arranged 10 days uh, rehearsal residential rehearsal and in september we worked uh, from uh, 17 uh, to till now <laughs> work is going on and Excellent. if everything is uh, will be uh, normal if everything will be <laughs> will be okay then uh, we plan Uh, we have a plan uh, to uh, perform uh, from end of october but uh, uh, but uh, we are facing uh, the same problem uh, that is um, uh, the uh, to generation of fund uh, earning because this year uh, only our poultry is going on poultry is running but another other activities like training uh, workshop uh, tourism Hey, etc. etc. Our campus booking, hey, everything uh, is uh, stopped. So our income is um, every month uh, we need one point five lakhs. And last seven to eight years we earn this money from our campus, Amazing. from our different different activities. Amazing. But now uh, our earning is only forty to fifty thousand per month 
only from our poultry and fishery. This is the main problem we are facing till now. Now um, uh, we manage uh, our repertory, 10 members, uh, only we are paying um, uh, to 10 members only and other 10 members huh, uh, last four to five months, huh, uh, they are not getting any payment from our group. Huh? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. This is the situation of yeah. Tepanto Theatre yeah. Village and our. Yeah, well, on one hand, it's amazing. It's fantastic to hear that you are also much more positive in this this phase. But of course, I can understand how how anxious it must be, uh, especially on the funding front. I mean, this is this is a perennial problem. Michaela, did you find that you guys were better prepared for the second lockdown at uh, Harkas Studios? In fact, I believe you moved to a bigger space. Yeah, I mean, we have uh, anti-cyclical behavior seems to be our, <laughs> our way of doing things, which we realize in hindsight. So we are based out of this um, place called Aramnaga in uh, Andheri in uh, Mumbai, which is an erstwhile refugee colony, and it has a very weird, its own dynamic. And we grabbed the opportunity that rents have dropped by 50% here. So we got a space for like 10% more money, but three times the size. Yes. So we took that opportunity. And also that's how we built the virtual interactive stage because then we could have a fixed setup earlier. Um, our office was also the stage. So we would have to remove all the furniture and then use it as a stage and then put furniture back every day. Um, and now this is a dedicated space where everything is fixed. So um, that makes it much better also in terms of rehearsals for the um, actors because they can just rehearse there undisturbed. The second lockdown, apart from doing this, um, I think we were also like what um, Kalul is saying, um, we were less, like we had less fear. It was more we anticipated that we were just waiting for when is it gonna happen? When is it gonna happen? Okay, it's going to happen. We had one physical performance in between, which was shown online as well in our virtual interactive stage, but we also had 15 people in the audience. And it was a play which was designed that way that the audience would be very spread around the actors. So it worked beautifully and it was also very safe and everybody felt comfortable, but that was it. Um, then in the second lockdown, we started because we knew one day it's gonna end, um, but we have to keep doing things. And we also realized that rehearsing for the virtual interactive stage is extremely exhausting. Like you were saying, so it's so exhausting to do virtual stuff, especially with cameras and so much like, yeah. yeah. But um, so we also run a film festival called the 16mm Film Festival. And we do a lot of work in celluloid, um, working with film, analog film, as in like moving images. And uh, so obviously last year there was no film festival, no physical one, but um, usually we do workshops around that time. We do camera workshops and we even shoot things with participants. We have a script lab. Um, and so we started working on this because we are hoping that this year in 2021, we'll be having that festival and people kept inquiring for workshops. So we slowly dabbled into, um, planning these workshops because now we also have the time to sit back and think about what workshops do we actually want to do. Workshops is also a very um, spread out way of teaching. It's very safe. You can say, okay, our room yes. can fit 50 people. Let's invite 10. That makes it really safe. Then everybody works on their own table. So you can really navigate it in a way which makes everyone feel comfortable. Yeah. And this has been proven to be very successful. Also because our Instagram has really hit off during the pandemic because we've been talking more about what we do because we had more time to dedicate to talking what we do instead of doing, <laughs> honestly. Um, so people got more interested in what we, like what sure. our celluloid work is like. And so if I, if you say what's the second, what's the learning from the second lockdown is really workshops is the way to go for us. Um, Earlier, we were very hesitant to having any workshop except for these con like concise ones during the film festival. But now we are having celluloid workshops and residencies throughout the year. Sure. Um, with like residencies is usually two people at a time, three people at a time for six weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, and that has proven to get like a tiny bit of income. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, it's, yeah. it's a yeah. little, but I think it's already something that we have 
something to look forward to that you say, okay, every month there is a small amount of income coming in. Absolutely. And yep. we can continue it. It's a growing thing because we start with beginners, people that have never worked with celluloid and one year into it, they can do, they are continuing to do different workshops and amping yeah. up their... Actually, I've seen a bit of that and I've seen some of the young people working there. It's very inspiring, that energy that is there in that space and the work they're turning out. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Manu, what, yep. were, what, is, what, was your sec what were your learnings that you could use in the second lockdown? Uh, the second lockdown was, um, I was, after second lockdown, it was interesting. Oh, no, actually before. The first lockdown, uh, um, what happened was, uh, as you know, a lot of children used to come to Allah not necessarily from the, the small town where I'm in, also from the uh, Cochin city and all that, Fortuna theater, and all that got stopped. So, and parents were really, you know, uh, they really wanted children to have this. So by the end of uh, the first lockdown, there was a great demand. I would say great, but you know, there was a pretty good demand that they wanted this to start again. Right. And they started coming in and I've started, you know, some of, and at the same time, some youngsters from School of Drama, they were staying in the guest house. We are providing them a, a space to stay, a safe space, you know. Don't not worry about the rent and all that. So that was another great thing that we could do, you know, support some, at least some of them. And they started interacting with the kids. And and very unexpectedly, a small pro program started, you know, and it mm -hmm. developed. And I, so I just jumped into it beautiful. and I supported the group and we did our first children's play quite unexpectedly. Oh, beautiful. And that was actually the launch of uh, Little, the children's theater here. Uh, which I was hoping to do later, but then it happened uh, in that uh, beginning of uh, that, that space. And we also started film screening and we started a monthly uh, theater program, you know, every month. So we did that Jan, Feb and March. Uh, and we did, and that period was uh, because of the first lockdown thing, there was, you know, people really wanted to come and experience uh, the all open stage and all that. Sure. And we were, the, the happiest thing that we started getting uh, before that, if we were spending was 20,000 for a play, uh, that three months, I actually had almost 50% money coming from the people. You know, we we did something in a very interesting that we started announcing the play and we told them, okay, this is a ticket, 2,200 rupees. Can you buy it in advance? That's mm -hmm. something which we, we haven't done earlier. Sure. So I made people buy the ticket in advance so that we know by the time we go for the production, we know that, okay, this much money is there and I have to spend only the half for me. So that really worked. So we did some workshop, film screening started and all that. But then again, uh, the second the wave came. But then it was okay. It was quite um, uh, productive. Uh, we were really happy that we could do it. And the most confident thing was it, the confidence level really grew up. Because we know that there is a demand. Yes. We knew yes. literally that there is a demand for Allah. People yes. are looking at it, Allah. Sure. And that really helped us, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, and as I said, financially, I was uh, we are step by step. We are doing better, uh, doing the operation theater and all that. And I've kind of confidence that you know really increase. And now I'm sitting in a at least for two years. I'm sitting in a safe zone. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Actually, you know this is so interesting. So nice to hear this because you know one of the things I, I, during the first lockdown and then after that, you know, theater was just not being allowed to open. And I asked a theater colleague of mine. I said, do you think people miss the theater? And there was a pause and he thought very hard. And I know that he wanted to say, actually, they don't miss it, but he couldn't say it because it'd just be too no. cruel. So he said, yeah, I think they do. <laughs> but no. you know, so I'm glad that in your case, your experience was that the absence of that activity uh, uh, you know, was really felt by the audiences. Uh, Rupali, uh, you tell us, what, what, what did you do during those three or four months when things opened up and then back into the second lockdown. <laughs> We've started something completely different in the second lockdown. So can you just tell yes. us about that? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, when November to March was the very tiny window that we got for live performances. And uh, it was always our dream to be this arts hub. We wanted to welcome all arts into the space. And uh, we made good use of those couple of months. So we had plays, play readings, uh, music jamming sessions, dance jamming sessions. We even had an art jam once. So we had models come in and sit for the whole day for painters and sculptors and sketch artists. And at the end of the day, we had uh, semi-finished works of art. And uh, that was fantastic. We had a couple of theater festivals. Uh, we had a 26-hour class, Indian classical music uh, festival 
that uh, we had an audience coming, yeah, upcoming uh, talent from uh, the Indian classical scene uh, were showcased. And we, have, we had, I think, about 14 artists go one after the other. And uh, we, that we streamed live and we had a certain number of people come into uh, the space as well. And uh, all of this uh, helped, you know, when the second lockdown hit, it kind of reaffirmed our belief that uh, our strength is that we are a live performance space and we want to uh, hold on to this. And uh, so it's not as if shootings are not happening, that's an economic necessity. Sure. But uh, then what we also uh, came up with is something that we call Copra Munch. So it's- <laughs> uh, can, you, can you explain the meat yes, why I'm gonna, in Copra I'm Munch? Gonna, explain it a little bit. Ko stands for COVID, pra stands for prayogic, which in uh, Marathi, my mother tongue means uh, experimental. experimental. So yeah. ko pra manj. And it's kind of a, a pun on the word. In Marathi, kopra uh, is, uh, kopra means corner. Corner, yeah. So yeah. when the second lockdown started, actually we thought, okay, we just need to sit tight because we had some surpluses and we had some reserves. And then it's going on interminably and all our resources, our surplus reserves have eroded and uh, struggling to keep our noses above the water. But yeah. in the meantime, what we also uh, thought of was, uh, let's start this Copra Munch. So Copra Munch is a digital theater platform to put it very uh, succinctly. Uh, what we do is we have uh, live performers come and uh, perform as they would in a live show but we shoot it and we edit it online and then we uh, disseminate it through a digital platform. Yes. So people all over the world can uh, buy tickets because that's a big part of the economy of Copra Munch. And also we want, uh, you know, to people to still get the same experience. I go, I buy a ticket, I watch a performance that while I'm receiving it on my laptop or my uh, mobile phone or my handheld device, uh, it still feels like theater, though not 100% so because it's digital. But right. uh, so this is the activity that we've uh, started in the second lockdown. And uh, what the other uh, thing that we realized when we started Copra Munch uh, is that uh, people want this. We started it because we wanted to enable uh, other theater performers in the uh, city to reach their audiences in some way or the other. And this seemed like a viable thing to do. And uh, we have teamed up with a couple of other agencies. So there's one agency that uh, shoots and edits. That's the technical mm -hmm. team, one yeah. agency that disseminates it. Uh, the performing team is one partner and the box is the fourth partner. Right. And this is how we work about it. But uh, the very heartening thing was people want to watch things. People want to access something that's uh, close to a live performance and uh, the ticket sales are showing that uh, it's now rising uh, what we uh, the other learning that came uh, out of this second lockdown and because of the adversity we face so it's a funny thing that there's a certain amount of um, anxiety and depression but there's also something really heartening the theater community uh, has stood up for us has supported us has reached out to us and uh, every time I think of it, I uh, well up because it's amazing. It's so heartening that the theater community has yes. stood up in support of us and reached out to us. So that's the one thing. And another thing that I think all of us knew, but uh, we took a um, bet, like a bigger hit uh, and realized it that, uh, well, you cannot depend on the government systems. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. we yeah. have to fight for ourselves. Sure. We have to fight for each other. Absolutely. We have to collaborate. And so that's the, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that's another learning that happened in the second lockdown uh, yeah. for us. It's amazing. You know, I mean, though we, 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 we do say that this online work is very hard and, you know, it is, I have no doubt about it. But, you know, one of the unexpected things that we, uh, the positives that came out of it, we didn't even imagine that it would be something that would be so useful that we actually now have, uh, to use slightly crass language, we actually have assets. You know, so I have done a performance and it's recorded like this is being recorded. Now I can just run this anytime. All right. And even if 10 people watch it, it doesn't matter to me. It's not costing me anything to run it. Right. 
now theater being so ephemeral and you know the whole live you know discussion and that's part of it is also there's ephemeral it's it's the live when it's being performed otherwise it's gone here we have actually got recordings of our stuff and reasonable recordings which can be used and also i know people who want to do copra munch with you guys because that's the way they will actually document the performance you know i'm assuming that they have access to a copy of their performance and that's amazing for a lot of people who in the theater can afford a four camera shoot of a performance nobody can right, but where right. it's happening right right okay. they do they do we give access to them this is for a certain period and after that uh, it goes to the performing team performing so, yeah that's wonderful yeah. so so can we can, 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 can you know we we, we Let's just talk very briefly about the future. I see that there are lots of questions that have come in, okay. and we should keep a little bit of time for them. All right. Mm -hmm. So, can you all very, very briefly tell me, uh, starting with you, Karol, what does your future look like for Tepanthar, your space? What does it look like? Uh, you're still on mute, Karol. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. No. Uh, we 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 understood. We have to perform in our own space. Yeah. and uh, within a very limited audience not more than 100 and uh, big festival for the large number of audience yeah, is very difficult to arrange in this situation in this period so uh, we have to make very small production not uh, very expensive uh, for any kind of flexible spaces uh, um, uh, a higher we mean open air uh, or in black box or in intimate space uh, any kind of space um, um, performance which can be performed in any kind of uh, spaces this kind of performance have to uh, develop have to make us and small not very expensive not very large and sure. for a limited audience uh, we understood this and uh, we have to rethink about our other activities like our um, uh, our uh, for our uh, how to we collect our fund how to we develop our sure. fund how, how we can earn eh? we have to rethink and we started thinking about that but um, we have uh, three to four performance space and different kind of performance space we have a very good audience eh? a uh, 400 uh, number of 400 regular audience we have uh, and we have planned uh, to started our performance regularly for our own audience but we will be arrange uh, for uh, one performance at least uh, for 100 audience so our sure. uh, shows will be uh, increase eh? that's not matter because we have our own space and yes. uh, and we can do our performance in any kind of space and in any kind of arrangement also so yeah. the our, so our performance or shows expenses not uh, not a matter for us uh, uh, it it will be going on uh, for, for next uh, four to five months Wonderful. and uh, but we have to rethink about our earning and yes, we need absolutely. support also uh, from our theater circle uh, from all of you we need support guidance suggestion that how can we run our repertory how yes. can we uh, yes. run our tepanto theater so karol one of the one of the things that you guys can do and all of us should do it is you know use this occasion to get to know each other network because you know already in this one hour of conversation one can see so many wonderful possibilities of collaborations and of sharings yeah. not just of information but of skills of technology you know amazing things are possible so i you know i really hope that uh, this can take this further uh, yes uh, i yeah. i believe the yeah. our small spaces uh, uh, will take an important role in near future because sure. uh, uh, and we have to develop a network uh, yeah. and we have to share our experience our skill yeah. our expertise everything we have Correct. to make a very good network very good platform Absolutely. that will help us so manu tell me uh, during the brief period that you know that people were allowed to perform in in kerala uh, did the regular spaces open was there a lot of activity um uh, when it was uh, you mean when they started 
uh, in yeah, when they opened up, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah uh, actually, well, yeah, like most of the people were they're trying to do something, uh, you know, to hold on to that space and the, their audience. And um, interesting was there was a lot of theater groups uh, or individuals. They started trying online stuff, you know, like a lot of my friends started doing online storytelling. And um, uh, um, groups like Natak and a lot of uh, uh, groups they started doing their small theater. Uh, where the competition, online drama competition. Oh, I mean, yeah. Don't worry much about the quality mm. of it, but you know, mm. an audio plays. And that's another big thing happened in Kerala. A lot of people started doing audio plays, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, such things started uh, happening a lot. Yeah. Oh. And also, uh, we, of course, I, everywhere else, uh, the, we tried to go work with the government to get some aid and all that, but then it didn't much work. But, mm. Though the academy did something to support some people and all that. Yeah. Okay, there was some, the same, but not effective. What I believe, and um, uh, uh, talking about Ala uh, about the future, uh, we are very confident that you know this is going to hit. And there are a few reasons. One is uh, the online education system. Like every child in Kerala, we have better connectivity and maybe better financial things. So most of the students were, uh, except for the deprived communities, uh, they were all on the online thing, and that actually made parents a uh, little scary and panicking you know they want children to go back to uh, in intra live interaction and all that and that in in effect will help us you know like even parents who didn't uh, want theater for their children and all that <laughs> now they wanted or something you know do something with children yeah let them yes. have some social skills kind of sure. that's one thing and second thing teachers because teachers they have a push to perform on camera so now <laughs> now everyone else know about the skills they want and to they started the, the, the public start the parents started challenging their skill come on you're so bad in front of the camera you're not dealing with the students so now no, i know that there's going to be great demand from teachers for theater workshop which is already there i know that i'm getting calls like that so this is something and uh, uh, generally about um, uh, what else yeah and, uh, and as i said earlier we are confident that we're going to pump in some money for the lights and all that because uh, you won't believe four people, four shootings happened. Like last one month, four groups, like a music album. And, and they started, uh, they somehow came to know about Ala and they uh, came to Ala for shooting. And we also, you know, uh, supported them. So uh, that is going to grow. Uh, yeah. So we are also putting in some money for lights and all that. So that by uh, the next month, maybe when the government opens it, we're going to be a little more prepared to invite people. And we have a guest house that we, you guys can, as you said, you know, let's collaborate. All of you yeah. come in. We have a nice place to stay. Well, I can, you know, I can completely vouch for this. It is a beautiful space. It is a magical. I mean, you know, you can't imagine how beautiful that space is. Michaela, what, what are the plans for Harkat Studios? What do you think your future is going to be like? Is it going to be more workshops? Uh, do you visualize something else? Um, what, what, what are your thoughts? I'm chiming in on what Manu just said. <laughs> Parents really want their children to develop social skills. <laughs> um, so uh, interestingly, we were planning to open in December with the 16mm Film Festival and uh, our call for entries is open on free Film Freeway. And we've already received lots of entries from around the world. But now, since the government has released their guidelines and we're able to do something already earlier, we will actually have our yearly baby theater festival in oh. November. And um, so baby theater festival is um, a theater festival that goes for three days. And it's for, it's not only for babies, it's six months to six years and every performance has a different age slot. And um, yes, yeah, so we're actually looking for more people to, um, come and perform if any of you uh, know any um, toddler or baby theater groups um, please let me know right now we have i think four performances um, which are already lined up and interestingly a lot of people like you were saying manu um, theater makers also started to develop pieces especially for the digital which i think for baby theater makers was probably easier because they're used to using objects and very simplistic storytelling so for them it was an interesting way of telling stories using a screen like a top shot and then a close-up and then far away and doing funny things with the screen and now it's almost difficult for them to reverse engineer these plays into a physical um, okay. form Oh, but they have the story, so now they have to reverse engineer it into oh, like, what they used oh. to do. Oh. Um, but that's how we are going to start, and then obviously the film festival, and then hopefully January onwards, completely normal programming. That's we are back. 
<laughs> yeah, well, you know, shall I tell you something? I'm sure I share this sentiment with many people who are listening in uh, today. I, I'm just completely blown away by the amazing positive, you know, vibe that all of you are giving out to your spaces. I mean, such, so inspirational and so courageous. Uh, Rupali, do you share that sentiment at the box? Uh, what, what's happening? Yes. Uh, so the brief uh, period between the two lockdowns, uh, so the future for Box, as we imagine, is it's going to be an arts hub. We want it to be an arts hub. And in the time that it was uh, open between the two lockdowns, we tested it also. So we had all sorts of uh, arts related activities. And after the second lockdown, when uh, for a period, everything was shut and then shootings were allowed. So we've now become screening ready as well. We've now uh, discovered that we have the uh, space to uh, display large paintings, you know, like right. really huge paintings. Our space allows for that. So it could be a pop-up museum, sometimes art gallery, sometimes a screening space, sometimes a art jam, a music jam, a dance jam, whatever. So we want all the arts community to uh, come together at and collaborate with the box and work with us. The other thing that we plan on continuing uh, most likely is uh, the Copra Munch activity, sure. uh, except we might want to convert it to the hybrid version. So we'll have, as soon as audiences are allowed in, we'll have audiences uh, coming in to watch the shows like a regular theater show, but we'll also want to share it across uh, the digital platform. Since uh, this Copra Munch has, uh, you know, kind of uh, allowed people in remote areas to access theater. So people yeah, yeah. staying abroad or in other parts of Maharashtra, Marathi theater people uh, who want to, they cannot come to Pune, Bombay just to watch a play. Right. But sitting in their homes, they'll be able to do that. So yeah. we'd like this activity to uh, continue, the Copra Munch activity. We are thinking of that also. Yeah. Uh, the very important thing in Pune, because uh, the theater competitions uh, create a lot of young theater artists and it's kind of a feeder to the uh, entertainment industry at large as well and for the last two years the competitions are closed not happening uh, due to the pandemic and uh, we'd like uh, the box to be a partner in uh, some of those I think small uh, spaces will now uh, be a big part of uh, all of these things yeah. Uh, the larger places perhaps are a little more cumbersome to manage as they have discovered through the uh, lockdowns and pandemic. And we'd like to be a part of that as well. That's the plan. So we have plans and we are just waiting, raring to go the yeah. moment it's opened up. I think I think your idea of the hybrid, you know, having an actually live audience watching uh, performance being, uh, being filmed with cameras will make a huge difference because one of the things that affects uh, our actors and all of us during you know online work is the deafening silence that you have to deal with you know actors Absolutely. really feed off a live audience's sounds their their physical energy and you know you do this and you know, I, I know Mikhail I tried to you know the, the clapping and I'm sure that helped a lot but it's it's just having real people watching makes a huge difference. True. Yeah, I think True. that's going to work out. All right, great. Thank you all very much. You know, uh, there are lots and lots of questions. Um, uh, there are some that are open questions, some that are, you know, directly to uh, certain people that I'll, I'll sort of tell you. So, uh, but just let's keep our answers brief and try and go through all the questions as far as possible. Uh, right. Uh, so, Deepti, uh, actually, your first question is very interesting. She says, Deepti Rao says that, Harkat's virtual stage is extremely interesting. I wonder since both Harkat and the box are black box spaces, has there been any exploration to share this technology so that more black box spaces might be more digital friendly? And then, and is this even desirable? Okay, now that's an interesting question. Is it really desirable? Uh, and then she adds a little later, about 20 minutes later, she says, after listening to Kopraman, she says, well, Kopraman sounds conceptually similar to Harkat's virtual stage. Is this synchronous thinking perhaps? All right. So, uh, uh, Michaela, have you had people asking you, you know, to share? Because you guys, you know, I know you and Karan are amazing. Maybe it's, you know, I don't know between you, whether it's both of you or it's Karan or who, I don't know. But you're really into all this technology stuff. I mean, I'm in, always in awe of, you know, what you guys can do. Uh, have you any plans to actually share some of this time with people? You have a beautiful digital platform, you know, and we have all been looking at it very, very kind of, you know, with the greedy eyes. Um, so I think as it is um, currently at Harkat, 
it requires quite some, um, as you say, like technological savviness, uh, like Rupali has made it really smartly, I think by collaborating with somebody who has that knowledge. We already had this knowledge in-house, so hence we didn't have to get anybody on board. Um, but I think the way Rupali does it is probably, if you wanna have this for your own space, um, a very doable model. On the other hand, we were, um, we are working on a downsized version of it, um, which is especially for places like Kalos. Uh, Manu seems to be very well connected internet-wise because Kerala is a different place. <laughs> but um, um, it's a V-stage, uh, a portable V-stage, if you may want to call it that. And we are planning, it. funding is a bit of an issue to get this really going, but yeah. um, it'll be a portable version that can go oh. into different places, even remotely, um, yeah. even into tribal areas. We really hope to catch on to um, that kind of theater because what we envision is to keep it very briefly. What we envision is that there is a lot of audience in urban areas who are of course looking forward to going to physical spaces and are excited about it, but who also have realized, hey, we can watch stuff from West Bengal if you understand yeah. the language or if there's subtitling. And I like that and I would like to continue watching stuff from a place which is not Bombay. So we really hope that we get these ingenious, extremely different and varied kind of theater groups to perform in a way online on our stage so that urban much more financially able audiences can watch these and they get sustainability through that as well. But it's a longer process. Um, yeah. So I <laughs> but I, I do think it's, it's synchronized thinking, Rupali. I'm amazed. It's basically the same thing. Also, your black box is like, I really want to visit the space. Yeah, but, but you know, Michaela, I think it is very, very, very important. I, I, I personally believe that the time is right for an exclusive digital platform for theater. All right. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that we compromise in any way on the physical work. But I think this is the future for us. I mean, I hate that term that you can watch it from the comfort <laughs> of your home because my home is not at all comfortable. But you know, you know what I mean? I think I think the time has come for this. And um, thank you very much for that. Uh, Samira has Samira Anger has a very interesting question. She, it's open, really. Uh, maybe I can put it to Manu. Uh, uh, I'm keen to understand how the pandemic has affected the vision, the original vision of the spaces. What did you want to be? Did the pandemic affect that thinking? What did you do during the pandemic to keep your old vision alive, to keep your vision old or new alive? Uh, Manu, would you care to answer that? Um, see, the hold on to the vision is basically, uh, 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 let me put it the other way. What would have happened if I didn't have this financial uh, support? You know, whatever vision I have, you know, I would have, I would have, I would have to close down the space much earlier. <clears throat> now I sit here and proudly say uh, that is my vision. <laughs> so first thing is that to have that financial support. You know, uh, otherwise uh, it's very difficult. So uh, for me, it's because of that thing, and of course it, it didn't come uh, freely. Okay, I worked like a dog for two, one and a half years to, behind the clinic. Uh, so now because of that, I know that um, I'm able to hold on to my vision and I'm much more stronger now that I know that we'll make it. Uh, but so that financial part is has played a big, big, big role. Absolutely. Otherwise you, need, otherwise you need to have a big support system. See, that's yeah. something which I lack. I mean, I, this is more of an individualistic space. You know, it's just few friends, me and my partner, and few friends are behind. We don't have a big team. I mean, yeah. there's emotional support, but physically, we, yeah. we are only a process of slowly getting that physical support of paying, getting money. So at this stage, we could handle only because of the financial, financial backup. Otherwise, we would have stopped it. I, would completely, have, would have yeah, stopped. I can completely understand that. In fact, you know, uh, there is a question from Rashmi Dhanwani, uh, which is quite connected to this, and she puts it to you. Well, Karol, you could answer this. Uh, she asked, hey, did you approach local governments, cultural ministries in the state, local municipality, maybe in your case, a panchayat or anyone else from the administration to seek monetary support. If you did, how did that go? What did they need? What did they need to make a petition? What, what did you need to make a petition for this? Or what do you feel uh, now is needed to make petitions next time for emergency funding? Karol? Did you, I mean, you know, and it's interesting for West Bengal because, you know, I think the West Bengal government has supported the arts fairly consistently over time. I mean, I'm sure there are problems in that model yeah. also, but I am sure that, but 
at least there is a there is a there is a there is an understanding that the arts do need support which is completely absent in most other parts of the country mm. so what was did you ever make that effort during this pandemic for some support no in west bengal uh, there is no support during this time eh, for, for for the uh, people of from art sector eh, and uh, theater people theater community is facing uh, difficulties uh, serious uh, problem they are facing but um, uh, state government uh, has uh, no support eh, uh, for them and uh, in this period uh, we don't uh, appeal to a uh, local administration or uh, uh, state government or uh, or any other uh, so, but um, uh, our uh, friends from our friend circle from our well wishers uh, we getting support uh, they they extend their helping hand but till now till now we not uh, appeal to any administration or any state government and yeah. this is very important um, uh, suggestion also for us that uh, we have to uh, um, um, uh, develop a fund for this kind of emergency period. And um, mm -hmm. uh, this is very necessary for us because uh, we, um, we feel it in this time. Sure. You know, let me just tell you, uh, you know, I'd like to share with you something that I, I just kind of encountered this evening. Uh, since all of us are talking about theater and the support that's being, you know, absent from the government, uh, you know, I get regular messages from the Sangeet Natak Academy about their activities during the pandemic. And it's just amazing how completely absent they've been. And <laughs> now today, today, there are these WhatsApp messages, graphics that come that announce that today is, is surgical strike divas, right? Did you know that? Today is Surgical Strike Divas, which is part of this Amrit Mahatsav uh, festival that is going on. Okay, and in 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 celebration of Surgical Strike Divas, there are going to be these 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 online shows. I couldn't believe my eyes. I just couldn't believe. I mean, this is the extent. I mean, this is the sheer cynicism uh, that we are faced with. So, uh, Rashmi, I mean, you know, you're right. The state has has a duty, but. Um, it's just that theater people have never, never benefited from this. And okay. honestly, given the conditions, it's better not to go to the state because you're going to lose your independence. You're going to lose a lot of things. You're going to exactly. lose your credibility and many things. So we really have to figure out our own ways of doing this. All right. Uh, uh, Ashok Brook brings up an interesting idea and maybe uh, Michaela, you can sort of, you know, he says the digital platform is good, but restricted to those who can afford the high end technology. Is that so? Uh, and it, does it totally eradicate, meaning does it, it, does it become un, inaccessible for our many indigenous artists and their performances who don't have access to technology, they don't have the understanding perhaps uh, of technology. Though of course, this, you know, smartphones have made a lot more people tech savvy, but certainly they don't have access to the kind of technology that so perhaps, you know, more privileged sections of our society have. So what do you think about that? Um, yeah, to come back on um, um, bringing the Wii stage to uh, more underprivileged areas of the country, that's definitely a concern that we had because we did realize that um, let alone like being tech savvy, you have to have a person who has an understanding of how it will translate into a 2D screen. Like it takes a significant amount of education to be able to put up a good play that's enjoyable to watch. Um, so you're speaking really of the most educated of the theater makers. Um, so I definitely agree digital has made it very restrictive and very elitist actually, in fact. Um, also, if you look at who's gonna buy theater mm -hmm. tickets, I found it very interesting with Rupali. I would imagine that a lot of the plays you've put up are in Marathi and there is a lot of Marathi audience who enjoys that. But then if you go into rural areas where spe people speak, uh, a language that is not spoken by many people and where there is not a lot of audience anyway, they must have really suffered. So um, that's why we want to bring the V stage to less privileged areas and rural areas and like um, tribal areas. But um, one more thing, sorry, I'm losing my thread of um, thought. Yeah, I don't know, Sunil, was it you that in the very beginning of the lockdown had put up these places which were, which were extremely realistic where, um, actors would step into characters like the character of a fisherman and then would talk about their daily life and how it was affected by the lockdown. Yeah, well, I found that was 
yeah. mind boggling. And I think that is the kind of plays that are very easy to, it's not a play, it's a performance that are very easy to um, do as a less tech savvy person, even from a remote area. I found them so enthralling. I was glued to the screen and I had to remind myself that these are actors and not real people. Sure, sure, it was sure. so well done. So just to explain to people what you're talking about, uh, this was soon after the lockdown, uh, we thought it was just going to be three weeks long. So the we, we uh, so the co-founder of Studio Tamasha, Sapan Saran, actually thought of this idea. She said we need to we need to document the experiences of different kinds of people during this 21 days where this unnatural lockdown is forcing us. You know, at that point we didn't even we were so naive. We thought after 21 days we're going to go back to normal life. You know. So she did uh, extensive uh, interviews with different people on the phone and then used that material to create uh, fictional monologues, all right? And uh, these were distributed to actors who were all locked in and they were taught how to shoot themselves with their cameras. And this was uploaded to the internet. My God, how tech savvy were we? And then there would an editor who downloaded and edited and we put it out. So, it, and we rushed to finish five parts before the 21 days because it, after 21 days, this is not going to make sense. Yeah, so little knowing that 21 <laughs> days went into what? Yeah, 250 <laughs> days or something. Yeah, so that was that was the show. Uh, 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 Kalol, there is a question for you from Sharmishta Saha. She wonders, did you not ever think of going digital and if not why till now we believe in live performance <laughs> this is this is our belief yeah maybe wrong or right but till now we believe in live performance and our rural audience yeah, they want to watch live performance uh, and other things is we are working in a remote rural area uh, there is very poor network and we have uh, uh, expertise. We have not uh, that kind of expertise till now uh, who can uh, do it uh, or who can run any kind of online programs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is the reason. Uh, till now, uh, we are trying to uh, perform live performance and network problem is the major problem in our area. Sure, and sure. Now, 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 today evening, I am 30 kilometers away from my own place. I am oh. in, yes, in my yes, phone, yes. Uh, in my friend resort. <laughs> now I, I am in a resort. <laughs> yeah, well, that explains those silken curtains behind you, uh, Karol. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just going to mention that. You know, the first time I tried to speak to Karol, he was at Tepantar, and we just couldn't talk because there was just no network there. And immediately, you know, we, we realized that for the evening session, he would have to travel out of Tepantar in order to do that. So, hmm. I mean, there are practical difficulties, you know, to doing this. Hmm. But would you be open, Karol, that if, if all things being equal, and this is actually a question that's related to something that hmm. Ashutosh Poddar has just asked, uh, he asked, do you think there would be there should be training facilities to develop online hybrid performances for the groups? Do you think you'd be open, all other things being equal, do you think you'd be open to training? Yes, 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 yes. We, uh, we are flexible uh, and we are open. Uh. Right. Okay, all right. I think, uh, I think you know, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to take all the questions because some of them uh, already have been answered, uh, you know, in... Um, Okay, one last question now, again from Samira Ayengar. Uh, has this pandemic time affected the sense of audience for the work you put out from your space uh, and how? I think uh, it's somewhat been answered, but uh, um, Michaela uh, Rupali, would either of you like to take this question? Uh, has the pandemic time affected the sense of audience for the work you put out from your space? Uh, you know, for instance, you've been talking about an online audience, right? Huh? And people who are not in Pune or not in Mumbai, you know, who can actually have access to. Uh, I do believe that, you know, this this online audience that is international, all that is a bit of a, you know, overstretch because, you know, one of the harsh realities that we've had to face during the pandemic and all our online work is the truth that if you're marginal in the real world, you continue to be marginal in the online space right? Uh, you know, miraculously, 
20,000 people are not watching your show just because it's online and it's accessible anywhere in the world. It does not happen. So let's get real about that. But uh, Rupa, they tell me, do, would you like to answer this question? Uh, has this time changed the sense of the audience for you guys? Uh, yes, like you rightly put uh, that if you're marginal in the real world, you're going to stay marginal in the online world. Uh, but uh, to some extent, uh, I beg to differ because people who uh, have been away from Pune have uh, reached out now saying, uh, I hope you continue doing this post uh, uh, the end of the lockdown also, so that we can still have access to it. I uh, grant you that uh, it's a very small number, but how it has affected our thinking is quite interesting. So. Uh, the things that we now want to put out uh, are thought of in a manner as in that would address a larger, uh, a broader audience, uh, content wise also. And uh, we want to look at aesthetics also of that uh, when we put out stuff that will uh, reach out to broader audiences. I don't know if that's making sense, but well, yeah, I think so. I think so. I think you know. In fact, this is quite interesting because there is a question from Unnati Nilani who wants to know if you know people are going to continue with this online work and you know this hybrid work. You know, and I believe, frankly, from what you're saying, we have discovered the advantages of the online world, and I think it would be, you know, of course, everybody has their own, you know of thinking uh, but i know that a lot of people are going to embrace a hybrid existence which mm. is that they will plan to do some work online or put parts of their work online and work in the physical space i think i think that's going to be uh, a, a sensible thing to do uh, mm. but of course time will tell what happens you know yeah but great on that note i think we should uh, end this absolutely wonderful wonderful evening uh, as 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 has been pointed out you know what shines through what shines through in all these stories of all these wonderful spaces is the passion the vision and the enormous uh, courage that uh, and 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 positiveness that with which people uh, have uh, you know uh, stayed through this very, very difficult period. Uh, all your stories are an inspiration to many, many of us. Uh, thank you very much for being there. Thank you very much to the smart team that has actually uh, you know, enabled this evening session. Thank you very much, Menaka, Darshana. Uh, Rupali, of course, has done a lot of work off the screen also to make this happen. And thank you very much to all you wonderful panelists for being here today. Uh, it was absolutely delightful and let's hope we can continue this conversation and yes. of course to all of you who've uh, you know come in today for this session thank you very much and do come to our next session which will be really on the uh, the wonderful experiments that people have tried in this whole online world during the pandemic thing uh, I, i'm sure many of you have actually shown a great interest in the you know in the development of the online aesthetics and style and i'm sure that a session will answer many, many of your questions. Thank you very much. And on that note, good night. Thank, good thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank good you. Night. Thank you. Bye. Bye.